Yes, we're sorry. Um, if you want to connect with me, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the special education social workers. Oh, okay. So, okay, if you want to, I think you want to hear from you before you leave. I was going to, I was making contact with Yvonne up there because I work with the Arc of San Antonio. We collaborate with Northside and all the other school districts. And Brooke Carity, our community education specialist, has a series of workshops on guardianship and alternatives. And the support services team meets with families on an individual basis. We'd be happy to meet with you after you meet with Yvonne. I'll give you my card. And we hadn't even mentioned the words oppositional defiance, those beautiful words. <laughs> but, uh, um, Mama, <laughs> you know, you can have a 16-year-old say, I'm not going to get a job. You can't make me do that because <laughs> it's anxiety, right? They're just like, you're going to make me do what? Um, my son, who's on the spectrum, he, was a, he finished his freshman year, and I remember his words to me were, don't ever make me do that again. <laughs> and he was like, what do, you, what, what do you mean? Like, go to high school. I'm not doing that. He was just so adamant, you know, don't ever make me do that again. Um, and he went, he's doing fine, but that total, the beginning of that fear, you're going to find that resistance. Um, and hearing somebody say, make them face that anxiety, there's truth in that. Because there's confidence when you can survive that. Now he's walking the campus like he's a senior and he's not, he's a sophomore. But, but to be able to face that fear and say, I can do it, you know, parents, we're, we're mother hens. We want to go in there and rescue our babies and say, okay, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Terrible thing. But that's not going to help them long term. Are there groups that we can look for parents to for support questions, just like the ones you're asking, mm -hmm. um, that are free? Mm -hmm. There are some. You can Google some, but some that I have, uh, have as far as you know, an opinion about one way or the other, I wish I did. There's, there are not enough groups. There's not enough of anything. We're needing to, to build those types of things. Um, support groups, for instance, of um, adults who are on the spectrum that just want to connect with other people who know what they're going through. There's probably one or two that I can think of. Um, for parent support that are free, that's difficult. It's difficult to find. I think that it might take a joint effort to do something like that, where we're working together to provide that for the community, because there's not a lot, and that's just the truth. We need to do more. I'm hoping we can, and we have a, a positive uh, program that does have a support group. Our ages were through, um, 17, but some of those groups are still open for those families who have children mm -hmm. And our, our autism team will do um, sit with our families who need that follow up and that transition support as they go through the different areas and the top stages. So, we do you have that? Very good. I think I have quite a few. And Any Baby Can does have a good resource guide. I just remembered that. They put it every year, they do that. Um, I also know that Community Bible Church has a Living with Differences group, and it's for autism parents with. Um, children of all ages, so you could be an adult with an adult child, um, that it's free. Celebrating Differences, it's with Community Bible Church. Okay. And that's been going on for about five years or so. It's fairly new, I mean, comparatively speaking. As a school psychologist, I get a lot of records. Most of the time, about 80% records do not include an assessment. It includes a lot of diagnoses. Mm -hmm. So I get parents who are very frustrated because they've heard everything. And now all this is going to the mix as well. There's no assessment to back up. Typical. Um, typical case. Yeah. Do you have thoughts on that as to how it is that get better or worse in the community? Do you have the same thing? I, I actually do see the same thing. I see parents come and when we see soft signs or even core areas, and they'll say, oh, we had that checked out. That's not the case. And I'll say, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Can you bring the assessment? And there's nothing on there. <laughs> and it's in the private world. Um, that's, why, that's just my, my argument about being consistent. We need to work harder. We need to speak up. We need to not get into you know, combative 
arguments about it, we need to just speak the truth and say we're not consistent in how we're assessing this. Um, and make it a standard, you know, somehow. I don't know the first steps on doing that other than bringing it up here in conversation to be able to say, let's get consistent about what we're trying to do. Because when we are talking about assessment, the key is supposed to be that if I test that person, if you test that person, if you test, we're gonna come up with the same answer, not different answers. But I think the hardest thing is, is when, when it's coming out from some of the side hospitals with the diagnosis, not the yes. impression of autism, and it's coming from a psychiatrist. Um, they don't they don't trust us in the schools because we're not we're not an MD or we're not an, and I just feel like my whole career, my whole background has been an assessment, and and there's just and because all they have to do is write that diagnosis down without any assessment data, they will not trust. Uh, sometimes in the schools when we've done, I mean, as I've written like 40 page reports with 10, 15 observations in the classroom. I've met with parents, I've met with teachers, I've met with the students, and, and it's not autism. It's, some, it's, it's one of the other diagnoses that's been mimicked, and, and we still get, you're not a doctor. And it, it, it can be frustrating because. <clears throat> I, I just I, I get a lot of them coming out of the psych hospital, a lot, um, with inpatient. Um, I feel like there's definitely a need to bridge the gap between the medical and the educational communities. Um, having been in both, I know that there is a gap there. Um, it always warms my heart when I step foot on a campus, and we do that a lot. We we're at campuses, you know, private, charter, public, all the time. Um, and I see the gap across, it's just there. And it, it may come from our difference in backgrounds and things like that. Um, the only thing I can think of is when you do an assessment and you did an evaluation that you feel is thorough and that communicates a mimicking disorder to stipulate why, where, and how. So that it's an educational piece for a psychiatrist or whoever to understand why you derived it where you're at. Because that's what I do. and. I haven't experienced a lot of difficulty with physicians. They usually take our reports pretty well. I have had some where I have the differences with campuses, but most of the time if I'm working with psychology, school psychologists that, that we're familiar with each other, they know how I work, I know how they work, and there's a very respectful relationship there. Sometimes it's with individuals that aren't familiar with who we are and, and things like that. But we're still working together. I mean, we're still trying to come up with the same kind of help for that child. Um, and it's going to take that repeated effort over and over, I feel, to break whatever is causing that gap. I hope that's been helpful for you all. I think that you guys have an amazing job to be out there working with the individuals that you do. If anything at all, I'm hoping that you are going to be able to recognize the soft signs. And if you're not familiar with what to do next, send them to a person who is. <laughs> that's the best thing I can tell you. It's true. God bless you guys. Thank you very much.